Mike Griffin. I'm the middle school principal, and this is my right hand guy, uh, Matt Cooklins. And now on his right hand. And now on my right hand. Um, welcome. We're, we're actually really excited to have you here tonight because a year ago today is sort of our anniversary of the first night we stood in front of Westwood Parents together as a team. <laughs> And so this is the first time we get to do something twice this year, and, and, or, or in, our, in, our, in our cycle here. So we're really excited because um, we can tweak what we did last year, and I get to add a little bit more this year, knowing a lot more about Thurston Middle School. So just a couple of quick things. I'm always a big safety guy, so there's an exit in the back there. There's two exits here. Um, in case of an emergency, we know where we need to go. And I also just want to announce that Westwood Media is here to film tonight's uh, presentation for families who couldn't make it. So thank you for being here tonight as well. So we're going to jump right into it and and we we recognize that this is five schools coming together for the first time in one room of parents and we want to give you an opportunity to get to know one another. So we want you to do that through this question. Turn, turn around, say hello to someone new, meet someone, and just talk about your own middle school experience. What do you remember? Okay. So can we get a couple of brave volunteers to share something that you remembered? I'll remind you again that this is being filmed by Western Media. Uh, so a couple, couple things you remember. What, what, what from that experience do you recall? Say that again? I was bullied. So a relationship. There was, there was a, a negative relationship yeah. that you experienced. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so some aspect of a social dynamic that happened to you wasn't a great time. Yeah. yeah. Okay, it's real. It happens. What else? Yeah. Other other experiences in middle school. Yeah. You got a point right. Okay. And it lasted three months. Three months. Longer, longer than most. Yeah. Okay, other thoughts. So another, but another real and relationship experience, right? So, what, another one. Yeah? I was also bullied, but I had two standout teachers who really kind of helped me through that, and I always remember them for that. So, uh, a negative experience, again, related to a social piece. Right. But then also, you had built some strong relationships with teachers at that time. Yeah. Others? Yeah? Well, I just remember that it felt really different than my cozy elementary school. Yeah, so can you maybe speak felt, a little bit more? Well, yeah, I mean, it was, you go, well, my elementary school went to sixth grade, and you kind of like, you know, take me on campus kind of thing. And then going to be in seventh grade and be the smallest, um, with a lot of kids that you didn't know. And, I don't know. So you, it sounds like you went to like a traditional junior high. Yeah, so that transition was a little, uh, create some worry, some anxiety for you, and then you had to find your place in it, right? Okay. Great. Others, maybe one or two more. One or two more experiences that you had in middle school that you remember. Yeah. A lot of punishment. Lots of punishment. <laughs> okay. Okay, we have, we have a troublemaker in there. <laughs> but how, how did, how did, how, what did that look like? Detentions? Yeah, I think just scored an art and said that he took a Okay, <laughs> yeah, I know. one more. One more. And don't worry, we're gonna embarrass ourselves in just a second. So one more, one more experience that you had in middle school. Yeah. A lot of teachers who didn't know me. Didn't know you. Yeah, at the beginning and it was tough for me to so, like uh, be recognized by them. So again, like a finding your way, trying to make relationships. So um, we're going to get into a lot of, of talking about the middle school experience here. But the one thing that I will tell you is the relationship begins exactly the same way that it began for most of you tonight. When the students arrive every single day at Thurston Middle School, we have staff members, Matt, myself, we're outside greeting the students off of the buses or off of the backdrop off of to say, hey, how are you, good morning. And I think that's something that we're really proud of, something that we started this year. Um, it was something that I really believed in as, in, in as part of what I want to practice as that face-to-face -face connection with our students as they come in, because the relationship is one of the most important things. So 
What I want to what I want to flip over to is these embarrassing photos of two handsome guys. Uh, the first one is myself here, uh, and and what would, that was my what I looked like in eighth grade, and so or seventh grade, eighth grade time frame, and and what I remember about my middle school experience is I went to a really small middle school. I was able to foster a relationship with my teachers really quickly, and. I remember clearly teachers helping me find my path and what I wanted to do and making those connections. I specifically remember an eighth grade teacher who knew I had a dream about going to Boston College to play ice hockey. And she had a brother who was playing football there. And every week we would talk about that. And I remember that. I also remember the sixth grade girlfriend I had. I remember the seventh grade girlfriend I had. And I remember the middle, uh, the high school freshman girlfriend that I had in eighth grade. So there, there's something else that I remember about relationships there. But, but I also remember being awkward. I remember feeling awkward. I remember my feet maybe feeling bigger than the rest of my body or my, my scrawny little neck there being so much taller than the rest of my body and I was still trying to feel what it was like to grow into who I was going to be. Now the other guy's going to show you a picture here, I think of himself. Yeah, and you know, I mean, he starts <laughs> off and he's telling about his girlfriends and all this good looking guy, and then I have to juxtapose this. Um, so when I was in middle school, yeah, exactly. So what I remember about middle school is trying to get rid of these pictures, right? Um, so this is about sixth grade for me, and um, quite honestly, this is the only picture that I have left. My mom found it uh, sometime last year. Um, and again, trying to just erase his memories. And in all reality, I don't have tremendous memories of middle school, about the school. My memories are of trying to fit in, of trying to figure out who my friends were, and trying to figure out, OK, that didn't work, so I need to try something else on. It was also a time where for whatever reason, I thought silk shirts were the coolest thing. And again, poor choices. Um, your students are going to be changing rapidly over the next three years. I started this job last year at the, the middle school. I was at Deerfield Elementary for about 10 years before that. When I came up here, I hadn't worked with middle schoolers yet. I had been in every I had been at pre-K, elementary, I had been at high school, I worked in adult mental health. There was a three year span that I missed. Okay, and I, I, I've been working that span this past two years. It's amazing to see the changes of your sixth graders as they walk in this door to the eighth graders as they walk out the door. They truly become different people. And one of the aspects that I find totally off, like I, I genuinely am enthused about it, is helping students through that and helping teachers help students through that. Because I want your students to have memories, okay? Not just of their friends, but potentially school too, all right? So, Mr. Redmond, thanks for uh, talking about all your girlfriends. Um, <laughs> mine didn't start till later. So, so, we, so we're gonna jump into the, the middle school experience but before I say that, I, I committed myself this year to engaging in an entry plan process. And, and so all of you know that ent my entry findings are available through the Westwood School District website. And it would, you can also find the presentation with Westwood Media because I presented to school committee at our last school committee. And basically, what, what I had committed to this year as my plan for entry was to learn as much as I could about Thurston Middle School. And so that meant that I... I started last year when I accepted the position and I shadowed a student for a day. I, I, went, I spent the day in the life of a sixth grader, who's now a seventh grader and who has gotten to be about as tall as I am. Uh, I then interviewed and met with all school leaders at Thurston who are considered team leaders, which we'll talk a little bit about. I met with the curriculum people, I met with other administrators, I met with other principals throughout the district, I had parent focus groups, I had student focus groups. I covered every basis that I could cover to get as much information that I could get to learn about Thurston. <clears throat> and one thing that came out in my entry findings specifically spoke to the parent experience, and I want to talk about that before we jump into to the student experience. And it kind of relates to what Matt just said. 
our, your, your children are going to start to experience this time frame very differently. And some of them are going to want you to be super involved, and some of them in September will not want to see you 10 feet from this school. Because they're starting to formulate their own independence. And that came through my entry plan findings. Parents talked to me about how this was an awkward time because they wanted to be involved as much as they can, and we know that you do, but their children were pushing away. And how do we balance that? So I can tell you this, the staff here is amazing. I, I, there is not one staff member who will not call you or respond to you within 24 hours. If there is, I'd be surprised to know about it. I have received so much feedback this year from parents. So if you're, in, if you're ever interested in, some, in learning something or knowing something, you can call any one of us and we'll, we'll, we'll be right there to answer your questions. We'll be right there to talk about it. But it is going to be a little different. And every, everything starting now is preparing your children for high school and that's our number one priority. So when they enter as sixth graders, I'm thinking about how to prepare them to be seventh graders. When they're seventh graders, we're thinking about how they're gonna be eighth graders. And when they're in eighth grade, we're thinking about how are we ready to get them there for high school. So that's a, if, if you take anything out of tonight, I would take that message home. It's a tough transition too for all of you, as much as it is for them, and it's not unhealthy, and we're gonna help you through that process, okay? So, that being said, our schedule looks very different. What are, uh, it's going to look extremely different because your, your child will experience six to seven teachers a day. And up to now, they, they haven't done that. And they're going to have classes for 43 minutes long and change and move to the next class. But what they will have, in terms of relationship, is they'll have an advisory. I have a sixth grade advisory. I love meeting with my advisory. We meet about two to three times every eight days. So it's roughly about once, maybe twice here and there a week. We meet, we talk about things. That's our opportunity to make connections and be there as an adult support for them. They will also have various other kinds of things that we're going to go get into in terms of choices and options. But this, this does start to look very different than the traditional elementary setting where you go to your classroom and you stay there for most of the day. Maybe switch once or twice. We heard from a lot of you about the social pieces that you can remember from your own middle school days. Talk about mine, right? That was what was most salient for me. That's what I remember the most. Not surprisingly, that's very typical. That's what this age is really focused on. It's focused on establishing those relationships, social relationships, as they start to pull back a little bit from the familial ones and more into those uh, the friend groups. You're going to have friends change. We have um, five elementary schools come together. There's going to be that meshing of all 223, I think I just looked, I just looked, 223 students. There will be new relationships formed through that time. Those relationships, as I said, will change too. We also have the impact of social media, which is something that we are all figuring out, right? And that's something that we really highlight upon in our sixth grade health class, the effective use or uh, safe usage of social media. Uh, but that's definitely an aspect to which many sixth graders are a part of. You'll be part of an experience of going one-to-one. -one. Children are now going to get Chromebooks. They probably already have it. They have them. Yeah. Ready to go. And now they'll become more, more important, more, more involved in their day-to-day -day interactions. And so that's another component of that technology piece that we talked about. I would like to insert here that cell phone or no cell phone. Um, we, we've been talking a lot about this. Yeah. And one of the things that we see as one of the biggest problems with cell phones is the fact that they are texting all of you during the day. <laughs> or emailing all of all the parents during the day. And the parents are emailing back. I can't tell you how many times in a given week a parent will walk in and say, Sally just texted me and said she didn't feel well, and we have no idea about it. So something that we really strongly want to encourage coming into next year is that emphasis of no cell phones during the school day. If you need to contact your kiddo, call the main office, Mrs. Glebe's right there to answer the phone. 
She will get them for you down to the main office to talk to you or get a message to them very quickly. Okay? That cell phone, as much as they'll tell you they'll put it in their locker for the day, the reality is they keep it in their pocket and it's on vibrate and when it vibrates it's a distraction and it just takes away from everything. And it ends up just being really problematic. Because then, because then we're having a conversation, why were you using your cell phone? I was texting mom. Okay? What, did, what was, so, what, how can we help you? And we realize that's a real thing. Yeah, and with that being said, I will say in sixth grade, the sixth grade teachers are very vigilant about the cell phones. So it is expected that they are in the lockers and that they are turned off. We have in our handbook that cell phones are can be used if there is teacher permission. It's for educa educational purposes. In sixth grade, I don't believe we have many educational purposes at this point in time for cell phones that cannot be addressed through the use of a Chromebook. So just so you know that. I would also just say, familiarize yourself with some of these social media platforms. They stay ahead of them way more than we do. And, and many of them will tell you it's not appropriate for them to be on given their age. So we, while it's become mainstream and something like Instagram is on the phone of every student, probably, and Mr. Cooklitz, because <laughs> students say hi to him on occasion. Um, it's be, and we have that account to protect protect kiddos, because we want to know what's going on. And but, what Mr. Redmond's talking about is that I have my own dummy accounts, right? <coughs> so that I can kind of follow students to see what's going on, because sometimes that's helpful and gives me information. It also, I talk to the students in health class, I've been doing it this week that I have those and they are totally creeped out by it. Um, and I'm glad because it teaches people about safe internet usage. So just be keeping that in mind because this is also a time period where some kiddos will advocate that I need to have a phone. Or you don't need one with all the gizmos and gadgets. Um, and I'll just say, ultimately, that's your decision. Um, and then the last piece here on this slide is, as we talked about, kids are growing this, at this time, right? They're going through puberty. Their bodies, they just don't feel right to them because they're growing into them. Things are changing. Their hormones are racing. We you know, heard about boyfriends. We heard about girlfriends. That's something that happens. Um, and so that is another aspect to what we, here in middle school, we deal with and we understand that we get that but it's something that you're going to see as your students age up through their middle school so again all the things that are happening in middle school we touched on a lot of these already but a lot of questions are starting to be asked right so who am i yeah. trying to figure these out where do i belong who do i fit in with what's happening to my body where's my home <laughs> Why should I listen to you? Those are all things that are happening. And what we want to try to do is help them navigate all of these relationship pieces, but also academically finding out why is it important that I learn about this? How is it relevant in the real world? That's the biggest question I think we face. Like, why do I need to learn this math thing? Why do I need to learn this science thing? Why do I have to read this book? Well, we're happy to have the conversation. So, <laughs> so Mr. Redman said to me earlier today, I forget, I'm not a Star Wars guy. Why is Yoda on this slide? And I had to say, Mr. Redman, Yoda is on this slide because we are Yoda, okay? We talked about this. So as you have your students come to us, they're gonna be going through so many changes. Developmentally, that's appropriate. There's gonna be some rocky times. That's appropriate, okay? This middle school staff, the, from the teachers, to our support staff, to the aides that work in the building, to the administrators, we're Yoda. We are the experts in this. And I have to say, for the past, I know it's only been a year and a half, watching the staff work with students throughout, they meet the students where they are developmentally, which is what you would want that to happen. They are the experts in how to work with students at this age. So it's Redmond. That's what Yoda does with Luke. <laughs> so we're going to show you a video um, that our sixth grade teachers have put together, um, introducing themselves to all of you.
Hi parents, I'm Dan Kiernan. I teach science on the red team in sixth grade. I'm Jessica Urbino. I teach science for sixth blue. And we have a lot of exciting things planned for the upcoming school year. So, we start off the school year teaching science practice skills. And you can see here that the kids get used to using things like meter sticks, graduated cylinders, and triple beam balances. Next, we move on to density, and that kicks off our physical science unit, followed with waves, which include things like light and sound, hence the boom whackers. In the second trimester, we'll study biology. We'll focus on some human biology, as well as cell biology. Uh, we'll use the microscopes, which will be a, a new skill for most of our incoming sixth graders. And finally, we'll end off the year with some Earth science. We'll focus on the Earth-Sun-Moon system, and we will also go into more astronomy topics like galaxies, which the kids really enjoy. And then we'll finally wrap things up with Earth's history, which include things like fossils and the law of superposition. And throughout the year, we also incorporate a fair amount of reading and writing in our science curriculum. So, um, you know, scientists have to know how to write, too. So, we'll see you in the see fall. See you in the fall. Hi, I'm Ms. Aubrey, the red team art teacher. Hi, I'm Ms. Sanchez, I'm the blue team art teacher. We are so excited to have you join our art classes. You'll get to try many different projects and mediums. Like painting, sculpture, and cartooning. <laughs> Not to mention charcoal, clay, and graphic design. See you next year. Hello and welcome incoming sixth grade families. We are a group of Learning Center teachers. My name is Amy Feely and I teach the SLC or Social Learning Center. My name is William turkoff -Shamsky. I teach the CLC or the Communication Learning Center. My name is Jen Connor. I teach a learning center as well as small group math and language arts classes. And I'm Tricia Lund and I run one of the learning centers. In the learning center we provide academic support. We work on organizational strategies. We do project planning, uh, lots of test preparation, and we also work on the writing process. So we're really looking forward to helping your kids next year. See you then. Hello, my name is Gina Casamini, and I am the Red Team Drama Teacher. And I'm Jen Walsh, I'm the Blue Team Drama Teacher. And so, the drama program is part of the 60-day rotating arts program. So we will see your children for 60 days in sixth grade, 60 days in seventh grade, and 60 days in eighth grade. And it's really great because we see your students, your incoming sixth graders, the first trimester, which is perfect because they get to create connections really early on. We play a lot of group games, we do a lot of get to know you things, and instantly they have a group that they know a couple people right off the bat, which is why we love sixth grade right at the beginning of the year. Our overarching goals for the program is group work strategies, building confidence, uh, conflict resolution through scene work, and I'd say just like an overall appreciation for theater arts, hopefully by the time they leave us in eighth grade. And we have five units that we work on in the sixth grade curriculum. The first is a short getting to know you and team building unit where we play games, um, get to know each other's interests, they get to make friends. Next we do a tableau unit where they learn how to create a scene by starting with a tableau. Um, in a series of tableaus to build the scene, or frozen pictures to build the scene. Next we move into an improvisation unit, which they love um, to get to play the improvisation games. They learn what makes up a good improvised scene and they get to practice it throughout the games. We then move into Greek theater. It, they get to learn about, and you can see the masks around us, they learn about the structure of a Greek play and then they use that knowledge to create a Greek play about a fairy tale, complete with masks. Finally, we do a, um, a silent movie unit where they watch a silent movie, learn about what goes into making a good silent movie, and then they plan it, rehearse it, film it, and edit it. We also have an after-school component as well. There's a sixth grade play in November and a seventh and eighth grade musical in April. The sixth grade play will announce the first week of school and then rehearsals will start pretty soon in September um, so we can be ready for November. It's a great way for the sixth graders to make friends really early on and get involved in their school community right away upon entering Thurston. Yeah, so stay tuned early on for any information on the sixth grade play and of course always contact us if you have any questions. Yeah. Enjoy your night. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, 
In social studies, your students will travel through the lands of Africa, the Middle East, and ancient Greece and Rome with Mrs. Bova, Mrs. Franklin Briggs, and Mr. Lukash as their tour guides. We begin our journey in the Great Rift Valley with a study of our earliest human ancestors as they develop what makes us all human. Language, tool making, living in communities, and expressing ourselves through art and music. Our journey continues with a stop in the Middle Ages exploring the kingdoms of Africa that thrived while Europe was experiencing her Dark Ages. After a brief stop in colonial Africa, we move west into the Middle East. Our stops here include Mesopotamia, the cradle of civilization, and its architecture, stories, and wonders. Our next sojourn takes us to the kingdom of the ancient Israelites and the founding of monotheism. Next, we pause to marvel at the accomplishments of the Egyptians, including their amazing statues and monuments, like the one here at Karnak. The penultimate destination in our odyssey takes us to classical Greece, where we admire not only the culture of Athens, seen here, but also the strength of Sparta. The final leg of our journey sees us in ancient Rome, where we can view the ruins of the Republic and the Empire. All that is left is to welcome your students aboard for an exciting adventure. See, See you, you in, in the, the fall! fall. Welcome to sixth grade health, a unique class where it really and truly is all about them. I'm Ms. Womble, and during health class, students will learn and talk about age-appropriate topics within two themes, wellness and making good decisions. It's my hope that with the information that they learn during class, along with their family values, that they will be able to make good decisions, and then that will help them to become the best people they can be. Thank you, and I look forward to meeting your students in the fall. Hi, I'm Terry Sweeney, and I'm the nurse here at Thurston Middle School. I want to welcome all of our incoming sixth graders and their families to our school. Um, the nursing services here are very similar to the elementary school, except for some changes as your children get a little older. So I'm going to give you a couple of helpful hints. One, the day is really busy, so they're seeing seven teachers, and so if you can have them in school, it's really important because it creates a lot of anxiety if they um, are out of school. That being said, if they're sick, it's good for them to stay home because the day can be fairly long. My second helpful hint is to always update your contact information in Aspen because for some reason sixth graders think you're sitting at home waiting for them to call every time they don't feel well. And we know that that changes as the kids get older and you're able to move about a little bit more freely. Creates a lot less stress for them if they can reach you. Lastly, I will be nagging you all the time for paperwork. So a helpful hint is the minute you get that physical, just send it in. Because something is due every year and it means me having to nag you just a little bit less. That being said, I can't wait to meet your sixth grader and to work with you in the next three years. Have a great summer. and I teach band and general music. I'm Mrs. Legere and I teach chorus and general music. And I'm Mrs. Winslow and I teach orchestra. So a couple of highlights for our general music program is students will be using iPads for their compositions or some body percussion. If a child chooses an ensemble, they'll perform in The winter concert. And a spring concert. 
And if they choose to be in band, they will also perform in the Memorial Day Parade. So, join the band. Or the chorus. Or the orchestra. Or, or general music. Hello everybody and welcome to Culinary Arts and Consumer Education Classroom. I'm Mrs. Mather. We have this long and fancy name, but what we learn here are things that are very basic. As I said to the kids, in this class, you learn to eat smart and shop smart. Lessons are mostly hands-on. We make some delicious and nutritious recipes. And when we are not working in the foods lab, we are working on the classroom side, learning about important topics such as reading nutrition labels, analyzing foods for their nutritive value, and other useful things. This just might be their favorite class next year. I am so fortunate to be on a team with you guys. Mm -hmm. I feel so lucky and I feel like these grade six students have been amazing this year. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to take a moment to reflect on what we've done. Grade six math has been so busy. What was one of the topics that you thought the kids loved the most? I particularly think they love ratios and percents. Oh, the yeah, the it's just real life and comparing two quantities and the double number lines? Oh, the double number. Oh. They enjoy it, and it's different, and the tape diagrams. The ratio tables. There's just oh. so much that we introduce oh, no. to these students, yeah. but they really kind of grapple with it, and they're so successful. You know what I love? I love doing integers with them because oh, they love just, being in both the positive and the negative world. Absolute value? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Inequalities, they love talking about them, writing them, discovering them in their world. We have such a good time. With Imagine them. having more than one answer. I know. There's lots of answers to oh, questions. You talk about lots of answers, how about statistics? And then we start with that statistical question, and they don't know what we're talking about, but by the end, they have like this other oh, language. They're so talking cool. about um, the shape of the data, whether it's skewed right or skewed left. They, 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 they just think they're great. But it has been such a wonderful year. However, looking forward to a new year, we are so excited to meet your incoming or our incoming sixth grade class. Your babies are coming to middle school and we are ready and excited for them. We're going to take good care of them. It's going to be a busy year, but it's going to be a great one in sixth grade math. And they're going to love math. I'm Joan Palermo. I'm Lisa Yetman. And I'm Jen Tian. We look forward to seeing you next year. Thank you. Hi, I'm Joe Lawler. And I'm Abby Kalman. We are the 6th grade ELA teachers here at Thurston Middle School. That's right. I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about how we approach writing at the middle school. We start the year with two essential questions. The first is, why do writers write? And the second is, what tools do those writers use that we can steal and use in our own writing? Um, the approach that we take here at Thurston is very similar to the way they handle it in the elementary school. We use Lucy Calkins units of study so when the students arrive, they should be pretty comfortable with how we proceed in our approach to writing. Um, we also put up a lot of models for kids. So we'll put up peer models and teacher models and even professional models. And then the fun that we have is digging into those models and looking for the tools and techniques that really make them work. Finally, um, there will be lots and lots of opportunities for students to practice their writing. And that may take the form of a fictional piece, or an informational piece, a personal narrative, or even a persuasive piece. And we do have a lot of fun with the writing, don't we? We sure do. In terms of reading, we ask students to consider two essential questions throughout the year. Who am I as a reader? And how do I use close reading to help me become an even better reader? We read two whole class novels throughout the year. The first one is Tuck Everlasting by Natalie Babbitt. And the second one is Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry by Mildred D. Taylor. These are pretty complex texts, so we do a lot of the reading out loud in class. This helps deepen understanding, stimulate discussion, and encourage a close reading of the text. In order to help students get to know themselves as readers, we regularly provide opportunities for them to select their own books based on their own interests and abilities. We are super excited to meet these new students. And we know that middle school can be a big and sometimes scary transition, and we promise to take good care of our new students. That's right. Want to get back to reading? Let's get back to reading. Just highlight a few 
things, uh, but I think you get a lot of information from that video, and hopefully you see the excitement that's that's not just for the camera. I promise you that they, they genuinely love these kiddos every single day that that I come to work. I'm so excited to be here working with all of these people. Um, Can I just say, just to echo what he said, I know there was some laughter about the math teachers. That really is how our math teachers are. They love math and they love being here teaching. How cool is that, right? Like to have that be your math teacher every day. So anyway, this is Reverend Dunn. So a couple things. Um, one of the things that came up in the video um, that I, I really touched on is that teaming structure. Yeah. And so you heard a little bit about like I'm the red blue. I'm the red teacher. I'm the blue teacher. What we do here is we take the class of 223 and we roughly split them in half and we identify them as red and we identify them as blue. And what that allows is that those 120-ish students get to formulate a relationship with a specific team of teachers. All of our teachers are designated red teachers or blue teachers and then we have a purple teacher to cover some other issues with classes and number of sections but they work closely with both teams. And why we do that is because those four teachers formulate a relationship so they have a consistency of seeing your child every single day and that they can talk among that, that small team about what they're seeing in each class if needed to support them behaviorally, academically, whatever's needed. So they're, they're a team and your kids are on a team. We go to lunch all together so there's opportunities to see each other you know, my friend from elementary school is on another team. I'll be honest with you, at the start of the year, we have assigned sixth grade lunch tables, and we do that by advisory and by homeroom. And one of the reasons why we do that is because we want students to get to know someone else and start to talk and have conversations with others than just the friends that they came to from, from elementary school. There's also field trips that we do by team to start the year as well. It's a huge emphasis on the relationship piece right off the bat because we recognize how important that is to start fostering those relationships, those connections, those close-knit families that we want to create within each grade level. And that sticks throughout the rest of their years here. They will or can rotate year to year based on team color, but the essential theory or thought behind that stays the same, and the reason for that stays the same. No, I, I think you, you hit upon it. Um, really, I think my take home on what the team is is really to make sure that your student who's coming from an elementary school, where they might only have one teacher or two teachers or three teachers, depending upon where you're coming from, right? You're going to have these consistent core academic teachers know 110 kids. And it may seem like it's a lot, but they meet every other day as a team. They have team time set up every other day so that they can address concerns as needed, catch up on students, and talk about you know where they're at as a team and the work that's going on. So this is the, this is sort of the the gist of our, our 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 what your kiddos will experience throughout middle school. So they will have their core academic classes, and in sixth grade and sixth grade only they have health and culinary arts. And what happens is that alternates every day. So on, a, on an even day, because we have an eight day cycle, and really what it boils down to is even and odd days. On an even day, they have one of, the, one of them, and on the odd day, they have the other. So those teachers, in fact, teach all the students all year long, every other day. So they're one consistent person that they really see every single day all year long. And in addition to these, these teachers, they see them all year long, except they see them every day. Then we get into what was described as the rotating arts. So what happens is we're in trimesters. So we have three trimesters. They will have a trimester of art, a trimester of drama, and then they do the same thing as culinary arts and um, health, and they alternate computer science and engineering every other day. That's for one trimester. Then we get into some of the year-long arts. So physical education is paired with a music selection. So you'll meet physical education every other day, and then your music every other day. So what you'll be getting very soon from us is a form we need you to talk to your child about is what is their music selection going to be? Do they want to be in band? Do they want to be in chorus? Do 
they want to be an orchestra or do they want to be a general music? We're going to ask you for that selection really quickly because we are going to turn that around and to start to create sections and schedules. So be on the lookout for that. And question, can they be in two? They have to pick one of the, of the options. Yes. Okay. So and then the, la the last one is support, and Matt will talk a little bit <coughs> about support options. Yeah, so within Thurston, we have guidance counselors, as we do at the elementary schools, where we have school psychologists. At, at the um, Thurston, we have guidance counselors that, uh, as of right now, are based upon your last name. So A through about K-ish, you would have one guidance counselor. L through Z is another guidance counselor. You'll figure, we'll figure that out. We'll get into more, more information about that. Um, we have um, special education supports as we do at the elementary school. There will be transition meetings that occur from the elementary to the middle school. Um, we do have learning centers. We met some of those teachers there. We also have ELL instruction for students who might need English language support. And then finally, one of the things that we have here is a reading specialist. Um, and we have piloted this year having some um, short-term reading interventions that we are doing with sixth grade, and that would continue again into next year. So there would be sixth graders who um, would potentially be identified for maybe some short-term reading intervention support, and that would be something that occurs um, if that is something that we're thinking about, the elementary school, the middle school will be in touch. But that's an aspect of something that we're looking forward to and actually pretty excited about. So we give you all that information, and I see your phones are out already, because you're trying to make sense, you're gonna take a picture of this and go, whoa! Right, Mr. Redman is correct. For all intents and purposes, this is a two-day cycle. If you look at day one and day two, that replicates itself across. The only thing that may be different is block four. Block four is what we call our X block. X block is a time where the way that we structure it, um, it can be a couple of different things. The first 20 minutes, uh, typically, the first 20 minutes is independent reading. The second 20 minutes is time for you to do your homework. Get caught up. If your student has missed some time, we heard from a Sweeney, our nurse, sometimes kids miss classes, right? They get sick. It's an opportunity to go meet with teachers if they miss something. If they need to complete a quiz or a test, they'll go do that. If they're not getting how to do those ratios, they might go meet with Ms. Palermo or Ms. Yetman or Ms. Tia. It's an opportunity for them to go meet with teachers to catch up on what they need to catch up on. As you can see here, just to kind of put a fine point on it, what Mr. Redmond just said, you'll see block five on this sample schedule is where those rotating arts are. Students start in drama for the first trimester. In the video that we saw, the um, drama teachers, I just want to be clear, the drama teachers taught, said there was an after school uh, play. That's not something they have to do, okay? The after school play is something that if they want to do, they can you know, be part of that. So I just want you to make sure that you're, you heard that one correctly. Um, and then in that fifth block, it goes drama, art, and then they have computer science and engineering at the end. <coughs> and typically for sixth, sixth graders, we have their move, I call them kind of movement arts, at the end of the day. They get antsy, right? Not surprisingly. So we have usually PE at seventh block, seven or block eight, and that PE abuts or is right next to their music choice. For sixth grade, one thing that you don't see here is lunch. Lunch is fairly early for sixth graders. It's at about 10.50. 10.50 to about 11.20. When it is nice outside, we get them outside for about 10 to 15 minutes as we can. They need to run around. We understand that. They also have movements between their classes. It's not reflected here, but there's about three minutes, and it doesn't seem like very much, but believe me, it's a long time, in between those classes <laughs> to get where they need to be. So we're telling you all of this, and one thing that you can find in my entry findings is the fact that middle school schedule has been a topic of conversation that started before I came here and continues to be a topic of conversation. I don't know where that's going to lead us at this point. We're still exploring, but I would probably say 
there is a very strong chance that over the next three years, this schedule will look very different by the time your child graduates. And it's because we're trying to talk about, these are 43 minute classes, how do we create some different opportunities, how do we create some longer blocks, how do we create some flexible scheduling to meet a variety of different needs. And as a leadership team, we're exploring what that means and what we can and can't do. So I just say that. This will be what it's gonna be like for next year. But I wanna be honest with you. By the time they graduate, it could look a little bit different. And it's, and, and it's all in the scope of trying to figure out what we need for our middle school students. So we talked a little bit about services, about the school counselor experience. Yeah, so just real quick, we have uh, one uh, school psychologist that works in the building, Dr. Danforth. We have a school adjustment counselor, Ms. Rao. Sorry, she got married. Ms. Rao, and then we have um, two guidance counselors. So uh, Ms. Yim will be back next year, and Mr. Bushy. Those are our guidance counselors and support staff that we have in, um, in the guidance realm, school psychologists and adjustment counselors. We also, as I had said, have special education supports throughout the grades. Each grade has at least two special educators. We have a special educator assigned to each team, which is kind of cool uh, to be able to do that. As I said, we have ELL supports in the building um, for students who need that support. And then finally, we have the nurse here. And one of the things that Ms. Sweeney wanted me to make sure that you knew was when you get your um, physicals done, get them to us as soon as possible, especially if you're going to do spring sports, I'm sorry, uh, fall sports, which you'll see in a moment. And I see a, nur a nurse in the audience shaking their head. Um, so another exciting time that happens is that in sixth grade is when in Westwood we participate in the MECCO program and we begin that experience here. And we have students coming from various different parts um, to join us as part of the MECCO program. So one of the very exciting things that happened this year is we hired a new MECCO director. And I had, have, I had the opportunity to sit through that whole hiring process. And I'm really eager to begin to work with um, Mrs. Latifah Frank. Um, she's bringing lots of energy, some new ideas, and some new new thoughts about how we can work with our MECCO program, our MECCO students, and our Westwood students. And so one of the things that I just want to highlight here is that pretty soon we're going to be asking if anyone's interested in becoming a partner family, a host family for MECCO students. And, and what that looks like is just an opportunity for your child to partner up and buddy with one of the new students, participate in some of the summer things, and sort of be um, Someone for that METCO student, if they're if, if when they're here and you're close by, and it's really an exciting opportunity. I um, I have a, a personal and strong uh, family connection to Westwood. My wife went through Westwood Public Schools. My in-laws still live in Westwood, and my my I remember my in-laws were a METCO host family, and I just remember my brother-in-law interacting with the METCO student, and it was a really awesome programming things to see. So I would absolutely encourage you, if you're interested, to talk to one of us. We really want to, we, we're hoping that we can get some excited families that want to join us on this journey with those students as well. So I think it's a great opportunity to look for information to come on that. Um, as Mr. Revan had said, we have field trips throughout the, um, well, every grade, right? But in sixth grade, we start off with kind of almost like a team building experiment or a field trip. Um, we go to treetops in Canton, and I would anticipate we're doing this again next year. Um, unfortunately, one of them, it seems like the past year, has it's rained every day. Um, but our fall field trip <coughs> got rained out, so we just have that rescheduled, rescheduled bunch. Um, but we end up going to treetops. And then in the springtime, we end up going to Bodeborg, which is one of those escape rooms, because we really value that kind of team building aspect to sixth grade. And you'll see that also on the first day of school. When your students come that first day of school, they are in their first block. Sometimes we call it homeroom, but it's really just their first block. They're in block one for a long time. 
getting to know the routines and the expectations for Thurston, getting to understand what it's like to have a locker, getting to open that locker and have the time to do that, we take good care of them. All right, but we also are very cognizant of the fact that we are relationship heavy and we want to help students develop those relationships. We have some after school activities um, that are on Tuesday and Thursday after school. They start typically in late September. We have a late bus. Um, the late bus, so our, our activities go from about 2.30 to 3.30. We have three late buses, so it may not be that they get dropped off at their regular spots. We will put that out there where the spots are, and they'll pick something that is closest to where they live. There may be a little bit more of a walk for them than typical. And some of the offerings that we have here, you can see we have open basketball, we have international chef's club, we have board games, we have creative writing, there's a model <coughs> UN club. Um, there's, a, there's a lot out there that we do. Um, and so, um, and, uh, so there's a lot that we offer, and in addition to that is the sixth grade play. Um, it will be talked about that first week of school. There is tryouts, but everyone is part of it, okay? And this is just the trailer that they created for a previous sixth grade play. other opportunities again in um, the early fall there's an after-school scavenger hunt that's put on by the PTO yet again it's about bringing everybody together and trying to uh, coalesce we have uh, I call them there we have in quotation dances they're Thurston fun nights uh, I don't know about you when I hear dance middle school dance I don't have great recollections <laughs> um, so in one gym we do have a DJ playing music the other gym is either open basketball or some kind of like physical tournament. We have board games in the annex and we have lawn games in the cafeteria. We have organized sports for students. You can sign up at familyid.com. That's how you sign up. I believe registration is open already for cross country. Um, and sign, you can sign up now and into the summer. You need to have your physical. Please have that completed. In the spring, there is track for sixth graders. As of right now, those are the after-school school, school act, um, sorry, sports activities offered through the district. Here's your PTO information um, for your president, vice president, and um, treasurer. And just to highlight, the, um, so they are going to have a meeting on March uh, May 14th. Go back to March. Uh, at 7 p.m. and the PTO uh, will be meeting at Camellas and it's just an informational night. One of the things that they're really eager to do is to start networking and connecting. Um, you know, there's, not, there's, there's now going to be times where your child's going to say, I'm going to Frank's house and you have no idea who Frank is or their parents. And so this is one of those opportunities through the PTO socials where you have a chance to meet other families and get to know them and talk to them so you can familiarize yourself with other families within our school. And that speaks to what I spoke about early on about really building our family network at Thurston. Um, there's some reading, we'll put this, this information will go out in an email also, okay? 
but there's summer reading and it is a book Refugee uh, by Alan Gatz or Gratz, Gratz, thank you. And then we have um, 10 hours of math work that could be done or should be done. Um, and it's using big ideas math. Again, I will send all of Mr. Redmond and I will send all of this information out to you so you have it at your um, uh, fingertips. Um, but you'll be doing, or your students should be doing about 10 hours of math over the summer just to kind of keep those skills intact. There's some upcoming transition dates. This is our last slide here. These are upcoming trans transition dates. So I will be going, driving a bus, a uh, bus around town, taking the eighth graders to all the elementary schools, visiting elementary fifth grade students, and talking with the eighth graders, we'll talk to them about what middle school's like, and then give them an opportunity to ask questions. May 22nd, uh, after school, is one of our short Wednesdays. The fifth grade teachers and sixth grade teachers come together, and they share all the information that we need to know. We also have on May 29th, the fifth graders visiting Thurston Middle School in the morning. They'll be getting on a bus and coming on up here. They will go to classes, they'll go in our lunchroom, they'll practice and know what it's like to actually get like a, a lunch. Um, and they'll go back to their, uh, they'll have an opportunity to ask questions, see a presentation of music, and then they'll go back to their elementary schools. And then finally, August 24th, probably one of my more favorite days of the year, because you guys will be back. You'll have your students, they'll have their schedules. There will be lots of lockers that have um, their combinations on them that they can then practice opening lockers. It may not be their own locker, and in fact, I will tell it will not be because I changed the combinations afterwards. Um, but they'll have an opportunity to practice opening lockers. Hey, August 24th is? Yes. We, that's not right. <laughs> it's the Thursday, so it, I should have gone backwards. I believe last year was the 23rd, so this is the 22nd. So my apologies, I will make that change and put that in, in the email. So, we overwhelmed you with a ton of information, for sure. And I guess what I just want to say is, Hopefully you leave here tonight with some information that helps you with the transition and talking with your children. But also, I hope you left here knowing that we, we love working with middle school students. For some reason, we came back. And we, are, we don't plan on leaving middle school. We love middle school. We find it both challenging and rewarding. We find it exciting and it's different every day. We have an amazing staff. You will be in good hands. Uh, and we're really excited to welcome our new sixth grade class. So what we will do is we have some handouts here um, that sort of outline when something happens, who do I contact? So in the middle school, we have team leaders. Each team, red, six red, six blue, has a team leader. There's, there's things that you go to for them. There's things that you email Mr. K. There's things that you come to for me. Regardless, whoever you email, it gets to where it needs to go. And we're always willing. So um, we can entertain a few questions as a group, and then we'll kind of stop that after a few minutes, a few questions, see where we're at, and then we'll stick around to answer some more one-on-one -on -one questions if you have. So questions, I'll start over here. So the question was, anything to know about dismissals for walkers? Mr. Bay, do you want to take that one? So just Sure. Um, the dismissal times uh, at right now are 2:25, and I would anticipate that being so for next year. They are students that catch buses. They get rides out back from cars or walkers. All get dismissed at the same time. Good question. Yep. What is the uh, earliest drop off? Earliest drop off. Just um, 7:15 is when we typically have students start to show up. They would go to, uh, for sixth graders, they actually would come in here and sit down. Okay. Yeah. Uh, your child both cross country and the sixth grade play? Great question. It, they will, um, they cannot in the beginning. They have, would have to do the play if they wanted to play. They would do the play and then after the play is over, they would do the cross country. So, but you can sign up for cross country? You can sign up for cross country, yes. Yeah. And you know what, that's, the only reason I know that is because last year I had to discuss this with somebody, so that was an option, yeah. They would miss the beginning. They would miss the beginning, correct. What time does school officially start? School officially starts, the bell rings at 7.48 every morning. 
after 748, they would technically need to go to the office to get signed in. And they can get breakfast here? They do. Yep. Yep. That starts at 715 into the cafeteria. So what time does the office meet? 2.30 to 3.30. Yep, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Sports may be different. The sports may end at a different time. On Tuesdays and Thursdays. But our dismissal time is 2.25. And on uh, early release Wednesdays, it's 1.10. I have two questions. Uh, is there any halfway meeting like in the Yes, so everyone, every other Wednesday is the same schedule. Oh, and we just missed the at 110. So it's a much later time in elementary because we get dismissed at 110 instead of 225. But you're going to see that it's always going to be part of the same Wednesday. Same, yes, same yes. Wednesdays, yeah. And did you have the yeah. And then are they always, are they going to stay in the red or the blue for three years or they change every year, like in elementary school, they change like classes? Yeah, so they'll have different teachers each year. Um, but they and they will they could change red or blue. Okay, it, it's possible. It depends. Got some more. Um, I was just wondering what what your um, how do you divide up the blue and the red? Is there is there like a whole you guys have like a whole algorithm? <laughs> you take like each elementary and like divide it in half so that they're all. You keep going, that's exactly what I do. <laughs> no, really, I mean, that's what I've done the past two years. In, for incoming fifth grade, I get information, and I quite literally will go to, let's just take, let's say it's Downey, and Downey has, you know, 60 students, and there's, two, let's say, 20 boys and 40 girls. I don't know exactly right now. I split those in half, and then I use the information from in their fifth grade teachers to try, to try to group them so that they have a friend on the team. Okay? That's how I try to do that. If you were to take a look at it, it's on in sixth grade, it's fairly equal in terms of gender on, um, sorry, equally split for <coughs> gender across the teams. That being said, some aspects that play in are the music selection. Some aspects that will play on in, in, the, in that process later on will be the foreign language selection. So things like that start to change and, and sort of like steer us in one way or another depending on where the offerings are for which team. Yep. Okay. Good question. Yep. Okay. So about how many kids are in each class? Uh, we try to stick to the 18 to 24 school committee guidelines and not to exceed, I think it is 28. Yeah. So how many and classes right now exceed that? We don't have, I don't, maybe, I don't know that we have it. That exceed 28? I don't think Sixth grade, definitely. So if we're talking core academic classes, I don't believe we have, yeah, definitely, in sixth grade, definitely not. Seventh grade, I don't believe so. We may have one in eighth grade because of some need there, but I'd have to check because I think we're under it. Eighth grade is also our largest, like, 260 student yeah. class versus What's your average right now for sixth grade? Do you know? I don't know. It all, the, the, again, it all depends on how music selections start to shape because then, Just then for the core. Sort of course, we stick. We try to stick between 18 and 20. What's your average? I don't know that. Again, off the, off the top of my head, and usually that's something I, I apologize if I'm calling for an offer. Um, but it's it's well within those 18 to 24, yeah. right? And I, I would say if we split that in half, I would guess we're under the half. Yeah, and but I don't quote cool. I recall there was some data shared yeah. at an early in the year school committee meeting around yeah. class sizes, and um, our percentages were relatively strong. So. There's another question over here. Yep. Are students grouped by ability at all at this age? Like, are all math classes the same? Yeah. Yes. Good call. Yeah. Okay. So, with the Tuesday, Thursday activities and sports, can they do both of those, or are those separate? Well, Good question. It depends on the sport. So, um, most of the sports start a little bit later, and part of that is because of the coaches. So the ones that do start later, students may stay, may stay and do some of the after school activities, whether it is whatever is offered, or we also have homework club, so they may be doing that and then going to their sport. So right now we have track going on. I have a number of students I usually have that does the after school basketball. They do that and then they'll go in 
or they're doing homework club, and then they're going to track. Sorry, I'm running over there because that's where they meet for track. My apologies. Um, and then in sixth grade, math is, uh, just to put my point out, in sixth grade, there's no um, level. Uh, there are times when it becomes every day as they begin to do more of the practicing and learning their lines and all that kind of stuff. Um, I wasn't aware that there are any sports other than cross country, so I don't know if you can give us more information about that, or is there a handout that has that information? So it would be on the Thurston, sorry, no, no. it's on the Thurston Middle School website. There are other options for 7th and 8th graders. 7th grade in the fall, there is football um, and eighth, football is for seventh and eighth grade and then there is volleyball, volleyball for eighth grade um, at eighth grade girls at this point in time and then in the springtime it is track and there uh, this year we've had students play up because they needed players for um, softball yes so you will hear like middle school high school a middle school hockey team that's through rec. That, that's through the town. That's not through us. That's just what they're calling. So in sixth grade, there isn't anything for the fall. There's cross country. Cross country. Yes. Okay. My apologies. Okay. There's cross country for sixth grade in the fall. Yes. Oh, there are some rumors among the elementary school parents that drugs can be sold in middle school. I've told my wife I don't think the kids have money to buy Percocets or Vicodins, and so. I don't see how that would be plausible. Have you seen any concerns about drugs or things like that at the middle school level? Um, I will say I have not. I will also say that as um, the guy who does the discipline in the building, um, I have not had any um, Ill illegal drugs, whether it's prescription or other things. Um, I will also speak for a moment to say I'm sure that there's also talk of vaping. Um, and so while it is something that as a uh, staff we talk about, um, I've actually brought the different devices to staff meetings so that we can all take a look at them and understand what they look like um, and be more under, um, educated on that. The reality is I've only had one person, well, I've only had one incident this year where there's anything like that happening. Um, and so while I'm not naive enough to say that it isn't, happening more often. I don't think it's as widespread as the concern might be. Um, so given the independent nature of the middle schools and parents kind of letting the kids do their own, is there a way to check to see how they are doing like as they integrate into the middle school? Like I know that some middle schools have portals that you can sign into and check how you know their assignments are being turned in. Or yeah, so at Aspen is the portal that you'll be able to see some updates and then some teachers have some other different platforms that they, they talk to you specifically in your child about what they're using to share like feedback regularly. But a quick email, if you're not hearing anything, you'll get a response. They've also centralized, teachers centralized by using the My Homework app, so they, there's Google Classroom, but then it also migrates over to My Homework. So that is a way that they've centralized what homework needs to be done for students. Um, and then just like Mr. Evans said, we do have Aspen, and in addition to that, you know, last, not last in line, but I would encourage you to reach out um, and get it. If you're going to have questions. So we'll take one more question, then we'll do some individual questions, and so people can, yeah, you guys can take off. Just to piggyback on, do you have a school resource officer, or is it just in high school? So uh, Officer Pendell uh, is for both, for the entire school district. He's, so he spends time here, um, he partners with our PE teachers and our health teacher to offer classes. In fact, he's going to be here tomorrow. Um, I talk about some things this week in terms of social situations. Officer Pindell will be in, um, actually I think it's today and tomorrow. So yeah, he is part of our... Um, our so no one's assigned on a regular basis. No one's assigned. Okay, so thank you all for coming. We really look forward to working with you.